Man, I hate this. I don't know if this is buggy or it's supposed to be like this. Feels buggy to me. There, I fixed it. You're welcome, Valve. You could, uh... Yeah, I'll send you the bill for that later, Valve. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Pick. All right. What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris. Going to be casting this best of two island team on the Radiant CIS experience on the Dire. This is going to be from the UGC Test League. Both of these two teams currently undefeated in the division of SA Steel. So, of course, this uh, will determine who gets to remain undefeated, and that has all the prestige, bragging rights, women, cars, trophies, and etc. associated with such a title. And the other team is just going to have to suck it up because they lost. Although I think technically they could go 1-1, so that means that they both lose it, and then that will be hilarious to me. But anyway, yes, uh, first game set I have gotten to cast for UGC League, but not the first that I was supposed to cast. Uh, that's a story for a different day, however, because right now we have a draft going on, and we have Island Team actually first picking the Shadow Demon, along with the Brewmaster. Brewmaster is definitely seeing a large, large rise in popularity which I wouldn't have predicted like four or five months ago, but what are you going to do? Shadow Demon is a pretty good complementary hero as far as rotations are concerned. Uh, Shadow Demon is rarely a hero to stay stagnant in lane. He's probably going to leave and probably going to kill things, and if you set up a Brewmaster to waddle up and land a slam with that uh, Thunderclap, it does some pretty good damage and a pretty hefty slow amount as well. So, you know, disruption into Thunderclap. Whoever's on the in the main in the mid lane on the CIS experience side is definitely going to be feeling that one, especially since it's not going to be just the Shadow Demon who's going to be ro be rotating, but it's also going to be whatever hero island team. I guess I'm just going to call them island. Whatever other he support hero island decide to have roaming with that Shadow Demon. On the other end, CIS experience going to be picking up the Mirana as well as Bane, so they're not going to waste any time in solidifying their lanes. Mirana Bane, two. I mean, it's peas and carrots, right? Mirana Bane, they go perfectly together. Uh, kind of pseudo-forced by the island team's picking of the Shadow Demon. You, they, uh, so the CIS experience, if they really wanted to go for you know, Shadow Demon Mirana, not available because of the Shadow Demon pseudo-ban. Uh, but, you know, Bane Mirana, Shadow Demon Mirana, it's small distinctions. Like, uh, you could pull the Nightmare off of the targets if you're a friendly, and if your friendly carry is getting targeted by an arrow or whatnot, but overall it's usually a guaranteed arrow hit and that's really what you're looking for in lane because if you don't have that your kill potential is just going to drop like a rock now unfortunately for the CIS experience island team have also picked up the shadow demon and I already went over how that's a pseudo ban but it gets even worse because the combo is supposed to work like this see Bane nightmares Mirana arrows and then whatever other sport hero does their thing and then the targets usually dead you can't do that when there's a disruption on the field because he just put, gets put, put in the bubble and then your arrow is most likely going to miss or even if it does hit you can't capitalize on that huge stun duration or any stun duration because you can't hit them and then the, the enemies either fight back or at the very least you don't get your kill so it's gonna be a little bit rougher for a CIS experience that of course will only happen if these two uh, if these two heroes match up or I guess the Shadow Demon lane and the Mirana lane match up to, uh, to each other. And as it stands right now, CIS experience, they definitely have the power to go aggressive. Island team, they can as well with the Shadow Demon, though as it stands, uh, it remains to be seen whether or not they actually want to do so. CIS experience going to cap off their support lineup with the Disruptor. And the Island team, they're going to get the Centaur War Runner. So it's pretty good response uh, from that first from the centaur that island team have picked first uh, CIS with the disruptor it's a pretty good combination or I guess counter to the stampede once you see centaur running away or to your team just glimpse them right back and then usually you're going to be good to go also on top of that static storm is probably one of the better skills for dealing with the brewmaster it comes out extremely quickly I don't know if it comes out instantly like I don't know if it comes out he uh, at like hex speeds but it comes out really quickly, and if you're quick on the draw, you could actually shut down a Brewmaster before he gets his split off, especially if the Brewmaster gets greedy and tries to blink, clap, then split. Disruptor is great at dealing with that. So Island Team, 
going to go with their island water kind of theme, which isn't really shaping up right now. But they have a water guy, so that's something. It's going to be Morphling, along with the Shadow Demon. Still looking for that final support hero. Centaur can do it, but I really like Centaur in a solo lane a little bit more than I like him as a support. Like, he's perfectly functional in a support. But the problem is with that is that he, first of all, can solo a lane, so you're wasting a little bit of potential there. But also the fact that level 6 and levels in general on Centaur are just so, so powerful. Like, Double Edge, let me just mouse over this for you guys. Double Edge is a lot of damage. Like, 400 Magical is no joke. Yes, it does damage Centaur as well, but you don't really care how much damage you're taking when the enemy is dead at your feet. Stampede also as an assist tool, as just a kill tool in general for your team, you want to have that as fast as possible. Especially when you're dealing with Marana's and all sorts of slows, like you want to have the extra mobility for your team to get out of kinetic fields before they go up, stuff like that. So Island Team, I do think they'll probably want another support hero mid lane, probably going to be Brewmaster, Centaur Solo, Morphling, Shadow Demon, and then X other support hero going to be the lineup for Island Team. And then just have a pretty late game slanted uh, team comp with holding down the team with their uh, just sheer lane power. Like, they have a lot of bulk on their team. Brewmaster is hard to kill, as is Centaur. Morphling can get very hard to kill as well, though. For Island Team, picking a Morphling into a Disruptor, always kind of questionable. Like, Disruptor is a hero that saw a rise after TI2. Yeah, after TI2, because of how good he is against Morphling. Glimpse means if he uh, replicates in, he goes right back. Or, and if he tries to waveform out, he goes right back in. And of course, Static Storm makes it really hard for Morphling to do anything at all. So it's awfully bold from the Island team to be uh, picking the Morphling under su such circumstances. But so be it. CIS experience, on the other hand, going to fourth pick the Slark. Possibly going to be their mid lane hero, though it seems like Island do not think that. Banning out the Puck. Although Puck, again, with the Silence would be pretty good against the team that Island have crafted for themselves thus far. Slark versus the Brewmaster lineup. It's uh, actually not terrible for either side. I think it's actually a fairly even lane. Uh, that lane, Slark is still probably going to go for the standard pounce, one packed, one essence shift, and then try to duel the Brewmaster, which uh, Brewmaster's base damage actually isn't that high. It's the fact that he can get a lot of attacks in after he uses his clap, and you can't really do that if you're able to purge that and then leap away. So uh, it won't be the worst lane in the world for CIS experience. Slark also very survivable, so if the Shadow Demon and then whatever other hero decides to come and try to gank him, it's going to be really, really difficult because there's right now only one stun on the island team side in the Hoof Stomp, and even then, stuns don't really stick very well versus the Slark. Island team would actually do pretty well here with the Silencer, is also here that has been seeing getting a little bit more traction uh, as Dota progresses. But, yeah, Silencer would be pretty great for them for, as a support hero. Shadow Shaman would have been good, although you could always go for something like the Lion. They have a Shadow Demon set up, so they go for something like the Shrak, but instead it's going to be just a Chen. So it looks like it's going to be uh, a little bit, or not as uh, super aggressive towards the other lanes, though Smoke Ganks are definitely a possibility. Ganking with Chen on a Slark is all about the timing, and we'll see if Island could actually get that timing down to kill the Slark once rotations actually happened from Island. So, yes, their last pick is going to be the Bristleback. So Bristleback, probably, I would say, Island want to run the Centaur versus the Bristleback Island. The Morphling, Shadow Demon, Chen are most likely, or like, you know, 90% likely to be going down to the bottom lane. Uh, aggressively landing at Chen is always a little bit difficult just because you'll have to deal with the likes of Bane and Disruptor, and then things get really not fun really quickly. And holy smokes, Batman, don't smoke, it'll kill you. But these guys, someone didn't tell these guys, already three smokes. Uh, two on the Radiant, one on the Dire being picked up, and everyone's heading for the bot lane. So let's quickly go over who is playing what for the island side. We have Titan playing the Centaur Warrunner with the badass helmet. BGN is on the Brewmaster. Morphling is being played by Born2K. Sujiro Kifuja is on the Shadow Demon, and Mad Zero is going to be on the Chen. On the CIS Experience side, Slark with the badass cage on his face is going to be played by Fnatic, but it looks like we have to wait a little bit longer because Sujiro looking for a disruption. Probably not on Slark, but Dr. Wu, that'll be a good one there. He lands it. Is there any follow? However, Arrow onto BG and Dr. Wu getting body blocked a little bit by his illusions. Well done by Kifuja. Um, I don't know why you do this to me, Shadow Demon. Centaur looking for a hoof stomp, but getting nightmared. So I'm just going to call you Shadow Demon 
because if you name yourself that, you kind of are asking to not be pronounced, so I'm not going to pronounce you. I was about to say, it wasn't really, didn't really look like a fight that Island really wanted to take in that game. Chen is a really dead hero at level 1, like, what are you going to do with Holy, Holy Persuasion, 48 base damage, it's not going to do much. Uh, you know, more Flank, Centaur, Brewmaster, all very capable heroes, but against the likes of Bristleback, which is an absolute beast at level 1, and of course Slark, who is very hard to kill, it gets a little bit difficult in level 1 fights, so I think it would actually benefit, it actually benefited uh, Island quite a bit that that fight did not happen. But it looks like both sides are going to get hit a little bit in the vision race. Both sentry wards, or two sentry wards rather, have gone down and have taken out two observers. And wow, do they actually want to sentry this sentry? Do they even have another observer? I mean, they definitely... Okay, they're going to spend the money and just clear a sentry ward. Usually I would say that this isn't worth it. Because, so what? They don't have any true sight there. You don't have any ward to replace there. So what actually did that accomplish? You spent a sentry ward to kill their sentry ward. That did nothing. So, but either way, maybe they are planning something with wards there eventually, but mm, I don't actually know where their other ward went. Centaur has it all the way on the top lane, so that's going to be... Yeah, this is 100% a wasted sentry ward from the island side. But hey, sometimes you got to stick it to the other team. Let them know who's the, uh, who's the vision master in the game. Anyway, let's continue going over who's playing what for the CIS experience. On the top side, we see Cygnus going to be on the Bane supporting Fanatic Slark. Also uh, supporting in this top lane is going to be the Disruptor Fiendish, Dr. Wu. He's going to be you know, just doing the pulling action for his team. Mid lane is going to be handled by the remake Mirana. And on bottom lane, Bite Me going to be going 1v2.5 as the Bristleback. It's a dangerous lane for the Bristleback. A disruption into a waveform will chunk him down really, really deeply. Uh, you know, and also, Morphling has some pretty good armor, so odds are the Morphling is not going to be hit too hard, especially if he does decide to go for a Lincoln Sphere, which will then uh, involve a very early Ring of Health. So then, Bristleback, he's not in the most danger in the world, but at the same time, he won't be able to get a kill on pretty much any of these heroes, assuming these heroes uh, on the island team don't do anything extremely, extremely stupid. But who knows? Maybe you want to do something extremely stupid just to surprise the enemy. It could happen. It could happen. It looks like right now both lanes, or all lanes, looking pretty tame at the moment. Level 2 for the Centaur Warrunner, level 3 for the Bristleback. Unfortunately, for the island side, their top lane is getting pressured back a little bit more than they can afford to pressure back the Bristleback. Really, that's the fact that Shadow Demon is in this bottom lane, and the, gr and the lane... For CIS is just inherently a lot more aggressive. Like they can put this centaur in a bag if he just stepped a little bit too far out. And here, this might be it. The nightmare is gonna set everything up. Kinetic field plus the pounds. Titan could get a three-man hoof stomp, but it looks like he misses opportunity. He will get the two-man, but it's a little bit too late. The fiendish Doctor Wu is going to find that kill. In the meantime, bottom lane bite me. Looks like he's also going to bite the dust. He's gonna try to dig himself through the trees. He's actually going really far. I didn't even know you could go that far. Bite me knows these trees like the back of his hands. He's salving all the while. He's up to 400 HP, and all of a sudden, this kill not really looking too viable anymore. Teleportation coming in from Doctor Wu, and wow, that was pretty sweet. What? Just one tree, two trees? I didn't even know that was possible. That is that was pretty cool, Bite Me. That is just round of, round of applause for Bite Me. That was very well played through the trees. And then all the way back to his grandmother's house. That was this tree being eaten. And then went down this way. And I think there was another tree over here or something like that. Or, you know, somewhere in this path. But that was a pretty badass juke. I've never seen that before. Definitely going to try to do that in one of my games, but whenever I try to juke, I always fat finger it and eat the wrong tree and then somehow end up surviving anyway, but not really intentionally. So, Titan, with the fact that the Disruptor has left the lane, is going to get a little bit more free experience, but versus a Slark, it's going to be a little bit rough for him. Uh, Slark already with a level advantage. Titan, he's not really in any trouble, any danger of dying, but he's definitely going to be chipped out, though he does have five tangos left, so chip damage one way or another is not going to stick. Matt Zero has smoked up on the top lane. He does have a centaur in the area as well. Bane is a viable kill if they get initiation on that Bane, but that is a very, very tall order, though Cygnus is putting himself in a position where he doesn't actually have vision. Dr. Wu is there, so if Island want to start something, this will not be a fight that will benefit them in the long run. Centaur going to come in, look for Hufsan, might actually land it on Dr. Wu, but no, he's going to actually land it on Cygnus. Couple of whacks with that mace. Titan's going to come in, nightmared though. That's the second time, third time the centaur has been nightmared. He's definitely not enjoying it. And the Bane 
is just going to walk away after taking a little bit of a beating from the tiny centaur, not the big centaur. Take a look back at this mid lane, 21 for 5 versus the 16 for 9. The really, really low base damage of Mirana, not really helping her against the, the uh, Brewmasters. Still not that high base damage, but with Drunken Brawler and a much better animation, really putting it in his favor. So Mirana, in, as mid lane, I don't really like just because she doesn't have that great lane control. Like, level 3 Star Storm is pretty good, uh, but... I would much rather have her with partners in lane, and now he, the Brewmaster could just do stuff like that. Drunken Hay is being picked up already, respecting the fact that there is a Slark and a Marana on the other end. Having that extra evasion, maybe not for just for himself, but for his friendlies, is going to be pretty big, though I don't know how often I would actually do that as a Brewmaster in this particular comp. Maybe... Maybe if I was up against Slark 1v1 mid lane, I would do this, but definitely not Marana. Like, Marana could shoot you a couple times and you won't really care. She could get phase boots and then you might start to care a little bit more, but phase boots are still a long ways off from this for this Marana. And take a look back at this bot lane. Morphling has been left all alone. Bite me. Getting some good experience. He's level 5 versus the almost level 5 from Centaur. He'll get this level. He's level 5 after this wave dies to the tower. So Morphling does look like he's going to go for a Lincoln Sphere. I think it's pretty much the item to get. Protect you against Glimpse, protect you against Nightmare, Fiends, Grip, Arrow, all that good stuff. So the defensive option for the Morphling and Island. They are, I'm pretty sure, comfortable taking this a little bit later. Morphling is going to be the most badass carry on the map, and they will have you know all the support. So really, I think they just want this Morphling, get a couple of levels, and then make a real big power play where Brewmaster and Centaur are going to be the dominant forces on the map. So, come 30 minutes, Island are going to have a decent enough farm on the Morphling, so we can actually contribute to the fights. Dr. Wu going to get spotted out. Double Edge bring him down so very low. Test of Faith, and he failed. And now uh, Skeleton's being summoned. Bane is in a bubble, and he's not too happy. Marana's Moonlight Shadow is there, and there's no True Sight, so Cygnus just gets to walk away. Lucky him, but he's going to walk right back into the True Sight. But it's too late, and now Sujiro going to get pounced upon. He's put into a field stomp a little bit too late. Fnatic still looking pretty good. Or Fantic, it's not Fnatic. Now going to go to town on Titan. Matt Zero's here as well. Uh, the glimpse back into a brain sap. Titan dropping pretty low. Fan Fantic still in the area. Going to settle for the centaur kill instead of going for the three on Chen. We'll get the two. And I think CIS are going to be pretty okay with that. Dr. Wu is going to go down, but really, that's what Disruptors are there for. And Slark getting 102, whereas the other ends carry Morphling, farming very well, but getting actually bullied, purely bu bullied by Bite Me in this bottom lane. The Slark is definitely getting pampered a little bit more uh, than this Morphling. You can see the gold per minute for each team's respective safe lane one position hero is actually dead even. So Bite Me is really putting the screws to the Morphling. And, well, this wouldn't have happened if there was another support hero around, but, you know, your support heroes need a top lane with Chen's skeleton army. Putting some pretty good hurt on this tower. They'll bring it down to about half HP. They cannot secure this tower just yet unless CIS... Well, they are... They should clear this a little bit faster because this tower is taking quite a beating. The creep wave still not coming together yet. A Brewmaster now with a haste rune. He's going to go to the top lane, and if CIS don't get the hell out right now, this could result in many, many deaths for them. Tower will go down, and now Fantic is in a little bit of trouble. And it looks like CIS, they will escape in the end, though just Brewmaster still, with half of the haste rune left, maybe just wants to go for a little bit more pushing for his team. But it looks like they are satisfied with what they got. Get a free tier 1 tower, no engagement is going to be perfectly acceptable for Island, except Fantic. He wants in, going to get the pounce onto Sujiro, instantly going to get put into the bubble, that's Slark and Cursed Upon as well. There's the Brewmaster, going to drop some beer in his eyes, Sujiro though. Bane getting, going to cut him off. Sujiro, uh, actually, Fantic going to now pounce onto Mad Zero. Stomp is there along with the clap. Mad Zero, not looking too healthy. He's going to run into the Bane again. Cygnus going to get two kills for free because everyone is just throwing themselves at this Bane. Now Arrow going to fly and land perfectly onto BGN. Can they kill off this Brewmaster, though? They probably can't because he does have his ultimate. Going to mash that button. He will secure it. But the question is, will he get anyone in return? Fantic going to get stunned up. He will pack out a good amount of that stun. And it looks like now all the Brewlings have just got to run. The Marana Illusions looking to block the Earth, but the Earth stopped moving. Earth, you can't stop moving because that much kill you. Clap and will get the Slark, but it's not enough mana. He will get the Slark in the end using his Magic Stick Charges. So that's pretty good. I mean, he was screwed one way or another. Oh, what are you doing, Titan? Titan wants Dr. Wu. Double Edge. Whack needs one more whack. Not in time. 8 HP. The Disruptor survives. 
and just going to sack himself to the neutrals, not risk anything. I actually do like that play from the disruptor. Lost like 30 golds for, you know, it's not, not, not a big deal. But, you know, make sure that the enemy team does not eventually collect the bounty on his head. It's 3-6, to six and CIS experience are off to a pretty good start. The Slark is, I mean, first of all, you don't want to let Slark get any momentum because he is a hero that will constantly run you over for the rest of the game. Like, you know, from 15 minutes to an hour, the Slark will be a devastating force. If you give him an inch, he will take that mile. So CIS, with that combined with the fact that their Brewmaster, their Bristleback rather, has just been on this lane doing his own thing for this and for the entirety of this game, it means that CIS are going to be pretty comfortable for the next 10-15 minutes, assuming Island don't pull anything big off. Now the problem is uh, that is probably not going to remain the status quo. Brewmaster was forced to use his primal split in you know as kind of a panic option. That's never what you want. Bite me on the bottom lane, getting it put into a bubble, cursed up. And poison, no, just waveform, you know, just gonna try to hit him. Bite me. Do you have enough HP for this? Waveform gonna hit pretty hard, but the magic stick gonna bring him back up. Mad Zero is there, doesn't have any penance, test of faith, can do a little bit of pure damage, but definitely not enough. Dr. Wu is gonna try to go in for the Shadow Demon kill. He will put up the field and he will be able to make it away to safety. He's gonna try to teleport out here. Waveform in, one right click, not enough. Disruptor survives, Bristleback survives, and Island, once again, finding absolutely nothing on this bottom lane. This Bristleback, he doesn't have that much. I mean, Buckler does give you some pretty good armor. Five plus two when you pop the, uh, it's just called armor bonus. I never realized that Buckler's active was just called armor bonus. That's kind of weak. Uh, but, you know, it, it, between that and his level three Bristleback and his Stout Shield and his Ring of Basilius, he's a really, really tough hero to kill. And Shadow Demon, he's not exactly the hero who's going to be putting out the most amount of damage. Chen either, really. Both the, of the purposes of those... Oh, mean, meantime, mid lane, BGN. This time, he will not get the split off. Arrow, Chain Stun with the grip. Absolutely picture perfect for the CIS experience. And Bane's going to walk home with that kill. But as I was saying, the Shadow Demon, more of a setup hero. Chen, more of a setup hero than a, a, real, a real kill hero. Whereas Bane... I would say definitely a kill hero as far as supports go. So they're not really going to be putting out the damage. And, well, you can see the lack of damage really hurt them as Bite Me escaped not once but twice from the uh, attempted aggression from the island side. Fantic as well as Bite Me now going to try to chase down some of the island's heroes. But this might be them walking into a trap. They do have the Bane random Bane without the Fiend's grip and is still hidden from sight. So Fantic and Bite Me, they're just going to clear this wave. And maybe try to make something happen. Killing off the Morphling. Going to be really, really difficult without the Disruptor. And Disruptor is really, really far away. They're probably just going to look to not do much of anything. Just take some damage on the tower. Not exactly start a fight. But if Island actually do want to start a fight, I think that'll be perfectly okay with the CIS experience. Because there's a 3v3 on the bottom lane. And Slark is here. And really right now, Island, they don't have an answer for the Slark. They could barely even kill the Bristleback. I don't even know if they can kill the Bristleback. Fantic completely spotted out by the Observer Ward, but it looks like he doesn't really care. He's on the hunt for Sujiro, and he's going to get the pounce off with the disruption in midair. Sujiro is in a lot of trouble. We'll get Tessa Faith the back, but he is just so dead right now. Titan's going to get a two-man hoof something instantly packed it out by Fantic, who's now going to try to go for Titan, taking a lot of damage, mostly actually taking a lot of damage due to that double edge. He's going to get chased down by Bite Me. One more Quill Spray will do it. There you go. In the meantime, Centaur is sleeping. Bite Me it looks like this time won't be able to escape, though. He does have support coming in. Cygnus does have a Fiend's Grip, and he will not be able to do it because of the waveform. And there it is. Cygnus is going to get beaten upon by the Centaur. Also, Fantic going to town onto Born 2K, but it's just not enough. This Morphling too tanky with that Strength Morph. Of course, doing literally no damage now, but I don't think Fantic knows that. He has to just leave. Doesn't have enough HP to sit around. Waveform is going to be up in just a little bit, though, it looks like. Morphling, a little bit too weak for that. In the end, the score is 5 to 11. Did Brewmaster just respawn? Well, that was a lot slower than I thought. Brewmaster. No, Brewmaster died again. Brewmaster went back to the mid lane while all that was happening and died to the Disruptor plus Marana. I could only assume that was a glimpse back into an arrow into a static storm. Yeah, I was wondering. There was a, there was a severe lack of pandas in that last fight. Whenever there's a fight, you have to wonder if there's enough pandas appropriate for a fight that scale. And that fight was definitely a little bit short on the uh, on the furry creatures. So Brewmaster, that ultimate would have been absolutely huge for Island. At least, at the very least, would have secured the Slar kill and maybe even saved a couple of other heroes by the end of his split. But you're gonna do what you gotta do as BGN, not having the best game in the world. One three on him. 
He's kind of hurting for a little bit of blood, but really, he's not with his team. He's getting aggressed upon now twice in the mid lane. Now his tower is gone, so he's going to probably have to respect the enemy team just a little bit more. And I think that respect is going to happen as he primal splits on their faces in this bottom lane. But it looks like, no, they're actually not going to go for it. I mean, they already took down the mid tier one. Top lane of CIS has already gone down, but yeah, they could definitely go for a push right here. The Slark is still the most devastating hero on the map. Now with four points in pounds, three points in dark pact, he could hundred to zero almost completely the Shadow Demon. I mean, he'll get put into a bubble mid-flight, but you know, there's nothing you can really do about that. Vantic, he's looking for blood. Matt Zero, you're not safe either, so you know, don't pretend you are. Yeah, Fantic going to spot all of the Chen creeps out. And Brewmaster is going to make his way here. With the Brewmaster here, and with Stampede active, Island can take this fight. It doesn't really matter if they don't have an answer for Slark at the moment. They'll just kill everyone else, and then Slark will get a Fiend's... Uh, no, not a Fiend's grip. He'll just get, you know, whatever is left, basically. You know, the problem is for both teams is that they are completely revealed to each other. So, I mean, the arrow is definitely not going hit, to get hit. Not going to hit. If you get hit by that, then, well, you have bigger problems than the enemy team. And Chen Creeps just looking for an opportunity. EGN is going to run into Remake. She's going to get hit with a couple of arrows. And throw out the haze. And blink forward. BGN has a blink. Better watch out, guys. But blinking forward for a right click. Definitely not what they want to do. Marana is forced to pop the ultimate. I think a little bit premature. Because, well, first of all, Island. They also have... But BGN gets tagged with an arrow. Do they have enough damage to burst him down? Or could they put Stack Storm? No, the Stack Storm is going to catch absolutely no one. Dr. Wu is going to get punished in that waveform. Going to come through and catch two heroes. Going to bring them both very low. Vantic, though, still going to town. He's already killed off Centaur. And now he's going to try to go for this Chen. He will be able to secure that kill. Bite Me still very healthy as well. Pounce is going to miss onto this Morphling and waveform through. We'll keep Bane alive for just a little bit, but Brewmaster is going to secure the kill on that Bane in the end. Now going to try to go for Fantic. That chase will not lead to much fruit. Bite Me as well as Remake, both going to escape, and it looks like it was just a 2 for 3 trade in favor of uh, in favor of the CIS experience. Definitely thought it would go a little bit better. You know, BGN did use Ulb with it. There might be a little bit more. Fantic going to get clapped, and the instant glimpse back. BGN going to go back to whence he came. Now, Sujiro is in a little bit of trouble. The arrows from Ron doing a lot of damage, and Bite Me with one more Quill Spray. Going to secure that kill. Now with the Gnasal Goo. Going to try to go for this Morphling. He gets sent back to the base by Matt Zero. Looks like instead he's going to try to send BGN back to the base. It'll be a little bit... It'll be right on time. Yes! It's going to save, and Brewmaster is going to get back to the base, but unfortunately, Matt Zero not looking quite as lucky. The connect field is there, and Bite Me one more Womp with his mace. That's going to kill the Chen in the meantime. Born 2k. Going to get gripped up in this bottom lane. Brain Sap with the pure damage. Going to bring him down. No Brewmaster. No Centaur. Centaur's like, screw that, guys. I'm on the top lane. I need to farm my Blink Dagger. And that is going to be that. 7 to 17 in 17 minutes. CIS experience with a fairly commanding lead at the moment. 4,000 gold. 6,000-ish experience going their way. And they're looking really, really good this game. Like that Static Storm on the bottom lane. When you miss a Static Storm like that, when you could have easily, easily gotten it on a Brewmaster, you would think the fight is going to go south. But at this point, the Slark, I mean, just Power Treads, Drum of Endurance, it's not the most farm on the Slark. That's the problem. In Gold per Minute, he's not exactly on top. It's the fact that on EXP per minute, he's also not on top. So I don't know what point I was trying to make, except for the fact that Slark, he doesn't... Once he has level 4 Dark Pack, level 4 Pounce, he's going to be killing people. And Island, they have no way to lock him down. I mean, always it's very difficult to find ways of locking him down because of Dark Pack. But there is, again, a Stomp, which is probably not going to do much. No one's really doing that much right-click at the moment. So Slark, he's going to win any duel that he attempts. And Island, they just have to hope to kite him out and kill the rest of his team. It's been going decently. Disruptor and Murana were dropped pretty quickly. No, Murana actually escaped in that last fight. Oh, it's because Morana got thrown up into the air by the d Brewmaster. I don't know. But anyway, a couple of CIS heroes were dropped really quickly in that last fight. But all the while, the Quills are just stacking from the Bristleback. The Slark is stealing more and more Agi. It gets really rough for the Island team. That's not to say that they're out of it just yet, because they haven't had the fight that they've wanted. Centaur does not have his Blink Dagger up just yet. That's going to come another 100 gold. Brewmaster, although he does have his, the, the initiation that he was forced to do, again, was a panic split. And that's not the real split that you want. You want your Brewmaster to be doing the initiating. You don't want to be getting him initiated upon. Yes, that makes sense. That does make sense. So, you know, Island, their team fight hasn't come together in the way that they would really want at this point. 
like their Chen pick, essentially pretty dead. I mean, you use them to take down towers in the early game. They got the top tier one, what would he do? But there's still two more outer towers for the CIS, for the uh, still up for the CIS experience. So Chen hasn't really been putting as much pressure on those lanes as I'm sure Island really would have liked. But right now we're just waiting for, I guess, modems or something. Ugh. Bad internet is killing esports since esports. Since since esports was a concept, an idea, bad internet has been killing it. Let's take a quick look at the items while we have this small amount of downtime. Titan still working towards his blink dagger, as I mentioned before. Matt Zero working on his mech, which is I think already completed. Yes, already completed on the bristleback. Even more momentum for the uh, mid-game of the CIS experience. Born 2K, is that like Born to Kill or something? Or is it just Born, I don't know, Born 2K. Working on his Lincoln Sphere, a thousand gold away from that item. Will help him quite a bit, but again, it will not help him kill things. Uh, most of the time he's <laughs> gonna be forced to strength much because CIS experience, they have heroes that get right into his face. BGN has his Blink Dagger. Looks like not much else from these guys. Remake uh, does have the Maelstrom plus the Blade of Alacrity, so this Moran actually getting quite a bit of farm. I mean, she is 007, so you'd expect to have a lot of farm at that point, especially when you're soloing a mid lane uh, as the hero. It's like BGN thinking about teleporting in to help out this lane, but instead, just going to watch as his tower drops. I think they're just biding their time because right now, Titan has completed his Blink Dagger. Stampede was not used in that last fight, actually. Huh. Did Centaur just get locked down? I don't know. By the way, Dr. Wu and Cygnus. There's no grip here, so I don't... Oh, wait. Bite me is right here. Okay. Bristleback's still here. I was about to say. Uh, two supports can't kill this Bristleback. Not a chance, especially without grip. But with this, br with this uh, Bristleback here, they definitely are now capable of doing that, but it looks like they're going to back off for now. The rest of their teammates a little bit too far away. This Slark holding on to 2,000 Gs. Don't really know what he's going to be going for, but I feel like if you're holding 2,000 gold, you just got to be going for the Blink Dagger on Slark. We'll see if he does go for that in, well, right now, we'll see. So, yeah, I, you don't really save gold on Slark that much. The items that you buy on Slark, at least at this stage of the game, are usually a lot cheaper. Arrow going to fly, will we'll whiff on the Morphling, but, you know, it's an arrow, who cares. So, yeah, Slark with that Blink Dagger going to give CIS experience a good way of initiating. They got some pretty lucky breaks so far. Yes, it is a blink dagger for Slark. And the fact that Remake was able to hit an arrow on the Brewmaster. I mean, I call that a lucky break. Maybe not completely lucky, but they got an undependable break in that last fight, in that initiation, from the CIS side. You won't be able to depend on an arrow finding its target to start every fight. You need something else. And Slark Blink Dagger is more of a secondary initiation, but at the same time it's also very capable as a hero to initiate a fight. And, well, he's going to be forced to back out now. He has a Blink Dagger, so this is not going to catch him in not a million years. Blink Dagger not even attempted by the Centaur. Fantic, just like that, is back up to full HP. And the Moonlight Shadow is being used. Was it spotted by the Radiant? Looks like Glimpse is available. And it's going to be the Morphling. They do have a grip, but he's going to jump right back into the storm, which will connect. Born K is going to drop like a rock. And now Mad Zero, he's the one who's going to get grip. Centaur Stomp going to interrupt that one short, but the arrow from the Marana going to secure that kill. Who else is next? Looks like Fanta going to go once again for the Shadow Demon. Fanta has been on the Shadow Demon all game long, and that's just really mean. So Jiro will escape for a little bit, but Pounce with a pack going to secure that kill. Centaurs and Ursa's oh my as BGN looking for an opportunity to clap split something but at this point with three dead he's just got to back off there is no more usage for the brewmaster here. Sad experience will put some hurt onto this tier 2 tower they should be able to take it down unless the hellbear does some really good creep pulling but it looks like that's not gonna happen. It was it was a, a pretty ambitious dream but he's dead now so the dream is dead. They will not actually go for this tower as everyone from Island is now back up. They could go for a Roshan. The ward coverage for the Dire, not that great in the Roshan pit. I mean, it'll be fully spotted out, fully, fully spotted out by the Radiant. But with no Static Storm, I think they will just have to take a pause. They really, really need the Static Storm to take a fight. Not as much so for the Grip, but, I mean, the Morphling, you could pretty much ignore him. Uh, at least, you could ignore him a lot easier than they could ignore your Slark or something like that. But yeah, wards are going up, still will be spotted out. CIS so experience with these wards, you know, making sure that they, the island team does not see anything of what goes on in this Roshan pit. 
Well, of course, it's not working because Slark does know that when he's being watched. So Shadow Dance will give them that D Ward sense, and then instantly to the Roshan Pit Arrow plus Nasal Goo will make things you know, fairly safe for the CIS experience. So here comes the island side. This is the spot where Blink Clap Split is going to be absolutely huge, and the Static Storm though is up. There is also a pipe and a mech on the Bristleback, so it's going to be really, really dangerous for Island to take this fight here, but at the same time, they can't afford to let this one go. Arrow right, gonna fly through, will miss this mark, Chen creeps up in the front lines, Tornado to start everything off, Roshan rolls only at half HP, CIS, they cannot do this, but they can bait Island into taking this fight, because they have sentries and observer wards absolutely frickin' everywhere. Fantic? Looking for initiation, has a blink dagger, will see BGN. Can they kill off this brewmaster? Why are they not going through brewmaster? They're instead going to go for the shadow demon as per usual, right? Matsuro going to take an arrow, which was supposed to be used for Shijiro. Looks like either way, both of them will go down in the end. Where's everyone else? Looks like BGN just taking a little bit of a snooze. We'll get hit with the Stack Storm, Kinetic Field, BGN with the Brain Sap, and will it be enough to kill off the brewmaster? It's going to be really close. Quill Spray, no, remake with the right clicks is going to find himself a triple kill in this pseudo Roshan pit fight and just like that CIS experience just go right back into the pit pipe was used mech was not used by bite me an island well their mech not even up yet the Chen Swarm has been less to, less than stellar to say the least and now 7 to 23 they're now going to be upper Roshan CIS experience look to be in firm control of this game as the gold earned advantage almost hits that 10k mark way past that, or not way past it, moderately, if barely past it in the experience earned. CIS experience, they're looking really good as Marana almost does have her man style completed 22 minutes in. In a pub game, you would say it's pretty good. But she also has phase boots and maelstrom. 408 kind of helps as well. Lots of gold per minute, lots of EXP per minute, most net worth on the map. Normally, Marana's, you would say, they need a lot before they could actually do some hard carrying, but she has that amount, or at least compared to all the other heroes. She's looking pretty good this game. Fantic, once again, going to try to go for a switch support. Mad Zero, he's going to be forced into the Shadow Dance form. He has the Aegis, so he doesn't really care if he does go down here, though he wouldn't really want to take a fight and lose the Aegis when he could just save it for the Static Storm and for the Fiend Grip and then take a fight, and then if you die, so what? You have the Aegis. Not like that, though. Not like that. Centaur looking for a blink in, will get two in the stomp, gonna try to bring Dr. Wu down with the clap, Dr. Wu will be able to get the connect field off, but no static storm, Fantic will try to focus the Centaur, will not happen as he once again is denied his kill because of that disruption, Remake has got to back off, this is the fight that Island wanted, forcing a buyback out of the disruptor, bite me though, will find the kill on Centaur Warrunner in the end, he's now going to get focused by the Brewling, Sujiro will get grip, not the best target to grip, now static storm will catch Born 2k, as well as BGN as he goes back into his main form, he's gonna try to clap and run, that's not gonna happen, and Chen, where is the Chen? Gonna get forced out by Bite Me. The Quill's doing so much damage. It's two double kills for CIS experience and a full team wipe. Five for one as the Disruptor buys back for a marvelous two-man static storm. They're definitely gonna take this tower at the very least. And with 30 seconds before the Brewmaster's up, a very long time before Island's fighting capacity is fully operational. They might even crack a tier three. I I mean they could back off, but really top lane's pushed, bottom lane's pushed, you might as well go for a tier 3 at this point, blink, into pounce, once again, this, the, the shadow demon, not having the best of times, although hoof stomp will save him a little bit, will be enough, no, whoa, nightmare, will not save him because pounce is really good, circle blink out, and now, guys, focus the tower, brewmaster's back up, so centaur, brewmaster, that burst combination, bring remake down really, really quickly, wow, titan with a great 4-5 man hoof stomp, actually, gonna pop the Aegis, waveform in from board to K, BGN, gonna get in there with a 4 man clap as well, Cygnus though, trying to survive versus this morphling, will get the brain sap off, star storm in, born to K, will get dropped yet again, he does not have a buyback, no, he does not, BGN will also get beaten down by this bristleback, with two more heroes dead now, CIS experience, they've lost only their disruptor, of, again, but they are going to get Raxes. I would trade a disruptor for Raxes any day of the week. And CIS experience are with that are almost going to look to just close out this game. 9 to 31 with a Rax up 25 minutes in. There's not much that you could actually do when you're in island team's position. When you're in island team's position at this stage of the game. Their Chen is 100% a dead hero. And yeah, that's it. BGN is going to call GG. So, guys, it looks like... For now, CIS experience are going to remain undefeated. Let's see if Island can bring it back in the second game. And that's going to come up as soon as they get the lobby up. So thanks for watching, guys. Game number two is going to be up in just a little bit. Stay tuned.